The national minimum wage will be increased from 13000 to 15000 per 40-hour work week, effective June 1, 2024. And joining us now to discuss the impact of the increase on the economy are economist Keenan Faulkner and John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas and past president of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. Um, I'm going to start first with initial reactions. Keenan, what was yours? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, it has become routine for the minimum wage to be increased. This is now, um, it's been yearly. It increased 2022, 23, now 24. Since 2016, it has increased by 142%. Hmm. So almost two and a half times it was 6,200, now it's 15,000. And, you know, there are sentiments saying we should now increase the minimum wage yearly and it should be indexed to inflation. And I, I agree with that. Um, you know, I think all the conversations that we have about minimum wage, then we start talking about what's a livable wage. But at the very minimum, uh, the government has increased it by 15% at a level which at least outpaces inflation. And mm -hmm. those are some of the things that you look at. Um, pe persons will say it um, has a potential to increase unemployment. Yet in that span of eight years, when the minimum wage increased from 6,200 to 15,000, unemployment has gone in the other direction. So the relationship isn't quite one-to-one -one where you will have um, unemployment being massively um, increasing in response to this. You have about, say, less than 20% of the workforce mm -hmm. earns minimum wage. That's around uh, 250,000 persons or less. Mm -hmm. and I don't think it's so much that it will start to move the needle exactly in the other direction. Mm -hmm. John, what was your, your response, your reaction to hearing the increase? Oh, I, th I think in general, I'm in agreement with it. Um, when you think that uh, inflation for the past few years has been pretty high. Um, purchasing power of persons has declined. Uh, and so um, I think the 15,000 is a reasonable level to get to. And I agree that from now on, it, it should be more regular than in the past. Um, it's not an easy thing because there are companies and industries that are going to find it hard. Mm -hmm. in, in particular, the farmers and people in agriculture who are not operating large farms mm -hmm. and have to pay um, you know, people to come on and they're already finding it difficult to find people to come on. But um, it is, I think it's a good thing. Okay. What about, it's, it's the how for you, Sir John, how it's been done, particularly in the last couple of years. Um, you know, Keenan mentioned some regularization and the intervals kind of being set. Right. Um, for a long time, we had no increases and all of a sudden, no, you know, back to back. Right. Um, and that's the difficulty or the challenge that you see in this. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely, I think that was a mistake on the part of the government in the past, allowing it to um, be at this low level for such a long time and then playing catch up. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to remember that Jamaica is not in isolation. We operate in, in a world environment. And uh, if we are, and there are many countries, including China and India, that have much less lower wages than we do. Mm -hmm. And we are competing against them mm -hmm. to find people for the BPO sector and other sectors. And, and a big part of why they come to Jamaica has to do with the English language and also the, the rate of pay. You know? So it's something that we have to be cognizant of. Mm -hmm. Keenan, I mean, you mentioned the word livable. A lot of people sometimes, uh, how do they calculate the minimum wage? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, it's based on consultation uh, ever so often. I think the interval used to be every four years, the minimum wage committee comes and they just set it. So it's not market determined. You know, persons might think, oh, they just pick a number out of a hat mm -hmm. um, because it, it, it seems that way. But uh, in calculating you know, a livable wage, the first thing you have to consider is what are persons um, consuming day to day? What are the categories of um, consumption? And not just food, but other non-food items. 
and then you, you would create an index, you know, because the consumption for your different items is, is not the same. You have to weight it um, accordingly, even though it will be biased heavily towards food. We have other things, you know, like utilities um, and so on and okay. so forth. For health. <laughs> yeah, health and, and all those personal expenditure items. And then you have something that's called, um, and for, you know, the viewers, I don't want to get too technical, something called autonomous expenditure. It's what you have, uh, autonomous consumption, it's what you have to consume consume mm -hmm. regardless of whether you're earning an income or not because people have food they have other expenses even if they're earning zero mm -hmm. and we find that for the most part employers will pay just to cover that you know like um, just to cover your food just to cover your transport to come to work but you need to know start thinking about beyond that mm -hmm. um, how can you know supplement a, a living that is is meaningful and I think when you distilled all the technical details it's hard to arrive at a figure but it should at least match um, exceed rather the average autonomous consumption of the average person you mentioned consultation a while ago mm -hmm. um, i hear a lot of groups saying this was a unilateral decision um, it caught them off guard um, even this article i'm looking at from the gleaner on the 22nd of march says in a media release on Friday, this is the opposition now, said the decision was made without consulting the Minimum Wage Advisory Commission on stakeholders. Uh, as, as well, your past president of this association, uh, Sir Mafoda, the JMEA, um, consultation ought to have been had with these groups? Is that how it should really work? You would, you would think so. You would think that uh, in determining, you know, an increase um, which is above the infl rate of inflation, um, they, they should be talking to the different sectors. Um, and, and in fact, as you can imagine, um, when a company has to um, increase its, its um, wages, wages. Mm -hmm. um, you know, above the minimum, above the inflation rate, they have to either pass on that, right. those costs or they have to find a way of absorbing it and going forward, we, we already are, Jamaica is already in a difficult situation in terms of our level of productivity, you know, how much labor goes into producing something. And if all you do is increase your wages, uh, it's going to affect your, your productivity if you're not able to adjust your way of operating your business so that you're producing more um, with the same amount or you're producing more with less labor. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing is that our official um, unemployment rate is pretty low. Mm -hmm. So even if people are let, uh, let go because of this, uh, they, their chance of re-employment is very good uh, with the inflation rate where it is. But I would say there is also another conversation that have to do with how you protect your employees after they retire from your work, you know, because even at 15,000, you can barely survive. Mm -hmm. And if all you're doing throughout your work in life is surviving, what happens when you retire? Because the, the, the um, pension is not enough. Mm -hmm. And so it comes to things like uh, uh, private pension funds, not the government pension funds. And companies should be looking at how they protect their employees for the future. And, and, and more focus should be on providing pension funds to staff. Mm -hmm. Is that another cost that companies are willing to undertake? Well, the, the good thing today about pension funds, individual retirement plans, is that companies can determine how much they put in. Mm -hmm. um, they can put in 1%, 2%, whatever they're comfortable with. Um, that's, uh, in fact, much less than the impact of this minimum wage. And it provides your staff with the ability to look after themselves in retirement. Yeah. Oh, we have a minute and so much more to ask because you raised a very important point in terms of um, the minimum wage increasing, but then costs also going up, Keenan, for the consumers. Yeah. Because 
the manufacturers and the, the service providers may decide, okay, um, this is a huge, you said a hundred and odd percent yeah. over a period of time, and that's a lot yeah, that's for right. a company to just decide, I'm going to absorb this. Yeah. Um, so do you see this impacting the economy in this kind of way? Well, in the last couple of years, I mean, it's unusual to have the adjustments yearly. So it has become more predictable. You might even find that next year, um, they will just increase the minimum wage again. Wow. And we're going in that direction of predictability, mm -hmm. right? It increased 2022, 2023, 2024. And, you know, why don't, I don't want to suggest that you give a specific rate that, you know, we're going to increase it by this several months in advance. Mm -hmm. It would help, I think, but the costs, that is a, a very big issue, especially now in a very tight labor market. Yeah. There's an upward pressure on wages, and you find that wages um, form the very large bulk of, of those operating costs that you have to deal with. Yeah. So do companies now need to buttress in into their budgets moving forward? Um, a line item that says... <laughs> wage increase but it's easier now if you index it to inflation yeah. because you can say okay we know what inflation was in the past year and so we can build it into our models for next year because that's publicly available information if it increases by seven percent okay we can give you um just above that ten percent increases predictability and certainty all right thank you both for being with us this morning mm -hmm. yes thank you so much economist keenan faulkner and john mafood ceo of jamaican teas and past president of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association. All right, after the break, gold medalist at Champs, Joe Zoel Jamel. And guess which school she's from? <sighs> Adastra Paraspra, <laughs> the great, immaculate, wow. conception, high school. Imagine?